Good afternoon, everybody. Hi, welcome to the monthly Outmatch webinar series. I'm your host, Dan Houts. Uh, here at Outmatch, we deliver the data that's missing from your hiring process. With clear, measurable insight into candidates and new hires, you will make better hiring decisions in your organization. We'll finally be able to measure the impact of hiring on your company. A uh, little housekeeping tips first. If, if you have any questions during the webinar, you can type them into the GoToWebinar queue. We do monitor that. Uh, you can also tweet us at OutmatchHCM. That's at OutmatchHCM with the hashtag OutmatchInsights, and uh, we'll address all the questions at the end of the presentation. Uh, today we're discussing five keys to coaching in the moment, and I'm excited to introduce our presenters today, Neela Sinha. Uh, Director of Talent Solutions here at Outmatch, and Heather Zaranak, uh, Senior Talent Solutions Expert, also here at Outmatch. Um, for over 15 years, uh, Neela has been designing coaching, pro designing coaching programs and conducting developmental workshops. Um, she's well, well versed in knowledge of talent solutions. Um, and Heather has over five years with Outmatch alone and uh, has facilitated workshops, provided one-on-one -on -one leadership coaching, and design development training uh, for global organizations. So, ladies, take it away. Awesome. Thank you. Welcome, everyone. So, in order to get started, we actually wanted to do a little bit of housekeeping, um, where you'll see that you'll have a questions or a chat box. So, we'll be using utilizing some of those throughout the webinar today. So we'll have some points where we want to involve you and make it a little bit interactive. So please feel free to use those features. Um, and so we also wanted to, as part of this, you know, being interactive, we wanted to reach out to you and kind of have a poll to understand, you know, some of the challenges that you have for coaching. So if you want to do this really quick poll, we're going to have a, um, the poll should show up here in just a moment. We're only going to have it open for a brief amount of time. But please feel free to use uh, the, the features there. So we're going to say, what are your biggest challenges in coaching and receiving feedback? So you've got five options that you can choose from. Um, you should have them available now. So please feel free to just go ahead and click on the screen. And we're going to have that open for um, about 20 seconds. Looks like we're getting some responses. Awesome. We certainly know these aren't comprehensive, but some of those things that we hear as some of those pain points in coaching. Okay, I think things are slowing down, Heather. Okay, great. So we have just a few more seconds, and then we'll go ahead and close that out. Okay. okay closing right now. Let's go ahead and share those with you. So it looks like the, you know, again, you could select all that apply, but, you know, the majority of you were saying that the challenge is how to be more effective in giving that feedback. So we're definitely going to touch on that today. How can you make sure that your um, employees or direct reports are really getting the feedback and it's being really effective? The next one was how to know if your feedback is working. That's always the hard part, right? You give this feedback and then how do you measure the impact of that feedback to understand what's really working um, and, and what's not? And then the, the next piece it looked like was, you know, there's a split kind of between anticipating the reactions from your various team members, but also knowing how to approach the conversation. So, you know, definitely, you know, understanding what is it, what is it that makes people react differently to your feedback, even though you gave the same message to different people, um, and how do you anticipate those different reactions? And then uh, lastly, it looks like being aware of your own assets and liabilities as a coach. So, you know, some of you did say that that was one of the challenges that you were having. So we'll be definitely going to be touching on a lot of these topics today. So thank you for, um, you know, uh, interacting with the poll with us. So if we think about the types of conversations you have as a coach, you know, we know that these talent conversations between employees and between managers, they happen for many different reasons. So the five types of conversations um, are really important to career goals, growth, you know, but if you remember these talent conversations do not necessarily have to happen through a formal process. You know, we typically think about talent conversations on that, that formal review where we, we go through everything that happened in the last year, 
um, and you know how they were impactful and what you should do for the next year. But they don't necessarily have to be part of that formal process. It's really about having really meaningful, impactful, and intentional discussions with your employees. So we're going to share with you today, as the, the name of the webinar implies, the five keys to coaching in the moment and really having these meaningful, everyday conversations. So the more of these types of conversations that you have, the easier and more natural these types of talent conversations are going to become because you're already having and talking about the things that are important. So we're going to be talking today about this coaching in the moment and how it can really be impactful and effective to have these types of talent conversations. So starting with that, we're going to listen to an actual formal performance conversation. You know, the typical type that you expect is that annual performance review. Um, we're going to have two different people that we're going to be listening to. So we're going to start off with Laura. She's the manager. She's a manager of managers. She's going to be conducting this formal review with her direct report, who is Jessica. And Jessica is a manager. She has been in the role for a short amount of time, just over a year. So let's go ahead and listen to this conversation between Laura and Jessica. And for all of you who are listening to this, uh, this is an audio exercise. So you may want to turn up the volume on your phone or voice. If you do experience issues in hearing the role play, please feel free to chat in and let us know. Uh, but you can also participate by reading the exchange on your screen as well. Hi, Jessica. I wanted to spend time talking about your achievements and accomplishments this year as well as specific areas that will help you be successful over the coming year. It's a good opportunity for us to focus on your growth and how to continue to improve your skills. Okay. I'm interested in your feedback and how I can continue to grow in my career. While you've worked really hard on the customer experience this year, I wonder if there are ways that you could focus more on empowering your team to take ownership and make decisions during challenging and unexpected situations in the future. What do you mean? Well, you mentioned that you spent a ton of time interacting with our customers during the system outage. Although this is great and is certainly part of your role, it's impossible to solve all customer situations on your own. I know you had a lot of other things to take care of during this time and had to work extra hours to make sure everything was getting back on track. Yes, but we kept our customers happy. Isn't that what's most important? Yeah, that's true. The customer experience is most important. But think about your team. Do you think they could have handled any of the customer interactions on their own? I think so, but I was really just trying to solve our customers' problem, and that's why I stepped in. I think they really appreciated my help. Absolutely. However, as a leader, it is also your responsibility to empower them to make decisions and handle these types of challenging interactions. Well, that's true, but sometimes I struggle to find the time to coach them and solve the problems on their own when they just have to be resolved. I have a lot on my plate already. I don't really have the extra time to spend to coach them on stuff they should already know. Yes, I know that can be hard. It's really important for the team to feel empowered, so I need you to come up with some ways that you can find time to coach them. Okay, I hear you, but sometimes I'm so focused on the operation of our customers, I forget how important it is to grow and develop my team. I think you need to spend some time with each of them, ensuring they feel comfortable and equipped to handle these types of situations without you there. You also need to do a better job recognizing them when they do make decisions and take accountability for their customer service scores. I guess that could work. I feel like I've already spent so much time working with them, but I'll try harder next time. So using the question box or the chat feature, go ahead and chat in some of the responses to these questions. So what do you think went well with this role play? You know, after listening to this conversation between Laura and Jessica, what are the things about it um, that you think were handled very well, that you think were really effective? Um, also, what do you think didn't go well um, as part of this conversation? And do you think that it could have been more productive? And if so, how do you think it could have been made more productive in the conversation? We're starting to get some good yeah, um, things. Starting to get some interesting, yes, definitely. So we saw, you know, lack of smart goals, right? It was, you know, it wasn't really a clear action um, and, and information about how to achieve those goals. You know, she did, she began with praise and she told her something that she did really well. Definitely, that's always helpful. 
Um, the intro, you said, was really good, laid out a really clear objective. They were making sure she was focused on what information to say, but she didn't talk about anything positive that she'd accomplished, just how she failed. Right? So we definitely get some responses in here. You know, it's part of an annual meeting rather than a regular check-in. Um, I love this point here, Heather. It was more advising session than a mm -hmm. collaborative discussion. Great point. Definitely. Too directive, you know, again with that one. And next steps. Yeah, they didn't really talk about what the next steps were um, about after this conversation. And then, yeah, they could have asked more open-ended questions. I love that one. There was a lot of being very directive, being very assertive, and just saying what she should do. Yeah, these are really great, really great mm -hmm. topics. I love one comment I think Helen made here. It could be a huge turnoff and make the person kind of get in a defensive posture um, based on how you approach it, how you approach the discussion. Yeah, yeah. it was someone else with something too, Helen. I think the employee felt that she had to defend herself. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And you know, there was a recency bias. So she was really talking about something that happened recently versus what had happened over the course of the year. So yeah. These are really great responses. Thank you, everyone, for your participation in this. Um, Sounds like there's perhaps more opportunities here, but definitely some things that, that went well. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of both in there. there you can definitely see how these are um, useful conversations, which kind of leads into our next discussion, which is we know that these conversations are really important, and they serve several key purposes. Like everyone was saying in this, you know, they really, they were focusing on the goal, they were, you know, giving some clear indication of, of praise about that. So you can really help to improve an employee's performance by having these types of conversations, really letting them know um, what they're good at, and so they can do more of what they're good at. Um, and so you're really enforcing that. And we could also let them know where they are and where they stand. So what, you know, where they are in relation to their goals, where they are in relation to um, their, their, you know, their, uh, their performance. So you can give some really good information about employees and, and have them really have some really good information and um, some good impacts from these types of uh, conversations. But if you think about it, these typical types of performance reviews are actually, we know that they're important, but they also get a lot of bad rap. You know, everyone kind of is apprehensive of having those types of conversations. So if you add to the already hundreds of reasons to be apprehensive of a performance review, here's another one. They actually dull certain parts of our brain, well, temporarily, at least, <laughs> thankfully, um, there's actually been research, brain research, that shows that when a person's status is threatened, and that's something that can often happen when they're told in a performance review that they need to improve, um, this activity diminishes in certain parts of the brain. So there's actually a very intense reaction that occurs to this perceived threat to their status that actually shuts down areas that help us to problem solve and make decisions. So really, the other piece is that these traditional performance reviews are not a natural experience. You don't go around asking someone, can you rate me on a scale of one to five, how I am in my communication? You know, you don't really have, that's not part of a natural experience. So having these types of conversations can be awkward. And they're, they're both from a manager and an employee perspective, you kind of dread those, that traditional process. It's not something that's natural and people look forward to. So what we're going to do, and Neela's going to walk us through next, is a different way of having these types of conversations. Absolutely. And as Heather kind of alluded to it, and as our title is aptly labeled <laughs> for today's session, we're exploring something that we call coaching in the moment. And this is to consider alongside the traditional performance review. Um, it's, really, it's really about using timely feedback and giving immediate kind of sources of information to an individual to improve. And before we delve too deep into what it is, let's, let's talk about the business case for it. Heather's already exposed some of the brain research and some of our natural reactions to a traditional former, formal performance appraisal kind of approach. Business case, for taking, business case for taking an alternative approach is really about two key points as we have positioned here. First, in our war for talent in terms of 
of finding and keeping our talent, our employees today expect immediate feedback. Give me praise for the things I'm doing well. Give me feedback if I'm struggling in a timely way or if I'm falling behind in your estimation and in your expectations. And so really in terms of keeping and retaining our talent, this becomes all the more important, coaching the moment and giving timely feedback. A second kind of key point in terms of, in terms of our business case is timely feedback is in the best interest of you as a manager. And I, I'm afraid we're getting a little bit of feedback. If Dan, if you're able to help on that floor. Um, so hopefully that will go away here shortly, folks. So thanks for, uh, for your forbearance on that. But second, that best practice uh, business case is really timely feedback is in the best interest of you as a manager in the company. In terms of helping employees achieve their goals and results, realize their potential, and understand how to close gaps that they might be having in their performance if they are falling short of those expectations. So today's talent um, and often our aggressive goals as a company, they can't wait for that performance review alone in order to correct course. We understand that's part of the mechanism will need to occur, so something to consider alongside is this coaching in the moment, that immediacy of, of feedback. So let's then explore a little bit more uh, of what is coaching in the moment. And quite simply, coaching the moment is referring to that real-time immediate feedback, giving that to team members. It's about seizing opportunities to provide feedback and they do exist all around us every day in terms of our interactions with our team members. So think about one of your employees that has to hit a pretty big milestone in a project, and it has to happen today. This is an opportunity to provide some targeted reinforcing feedback, some encouragement, um, showing her how her work contributes to the larger goals as an organization. Maybe another employee is struggling with a project, uh, and it's really important to their own personal success. Instead of telling them what to do, help them figure out what they can do on their own. Help him if he needs to do it and, and get back on track before it becomes a big issue, before the project becomes derailed. And third, you might have an employee who's a rock star, someone who just needs perhaps a little bit of fine tuning, um, some engagement before they get to that next level. Providing feedback, using coaching in the moment, Providing feedback in that moment will help them hone those skills as well, help her um, be engaged, help her refine those particular skills uh, to ready her for that next position. So coaching the moment um, it is really about taking those moments for any types of scenarios as we kind of gave in those three examples. The thing to note, though, is coaching the moment does require a mindset shift, as we depicted here. Um, it's a mindset shift to have effective conversations. It's about coming out of that traditional managerial mindset where um, you become more of a leader as a coach in terms of mindset. Traditional coach is really what we're talking about is maybe more of that, I'm coming from a place of authority. I can be more directive. Uh, this is a formal conversation. Uh, and you can compare that to coaching in the moment. It's more of that collaborative, flexible kind of approach that many of you chatted in as you listened to that performance review just a few moments ago. Uh, lastly, a key point in coaching the moment is about really showing a genuine desire to help your employees, help them succeed, help them grow, and that has to be based on a foundation of trust that's rooted in the day-to-day -day relationships. This makes it so that that performance, performance review that happens annually is just the cherry on top to round things out, but those conversations have been happening along the way. Um, so it's important through coaching the moment to leverage those opportunities that present themselves each and every day. And so in terms of our session today, what we're going to focus on are just five keys that are important for coaching in general, but can be really extraordinarily helpful to approaching coaching in the moment. And so the five that we'll explore today is first, know your personality style as a manager or as a leader as coach in a coaching in the moment scenario. Second, 
Know your direct report or your team member's personality style. And that means gaining some insight into the uniqueness of each of them um, and perhaps how they're different from you. Third key is adapt your style accordingly as the situation, the circumstance, or the team member may require. The fourth key we'll explore is focus on the goal. And then lastly, evaluate your coaching approach and seek feedback. So these are just five keys that we'll explore, again, useful for coaching, but we'll talk about them in the context of coaching in the moment and certainly explore them in relationship to the role play, audio role play exercise that we saw between Laura and Jessica as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our first key. And this one's called Know Your Personality Style. Knowing your personality style as a manager is really critical since your own preferences, tendencies, the combination of your knowledge, your past experiences, these, these shape how you process information, how you approach new situations. So having that awareness of your style as a manager can help you in understanding what drives your behaviors in a leader as coach capacity. How do your communications with your team members get shaped? How do you approach them? How do you give feedback? From what place do you draw from when you choose to give that feedback and get results through your people, quite frankly, as well? So an exploration of this first key, let's take a look at Laura. Laura, of course, is our manager of, of managers. Um, and using assessments, Laura can gain insights into her natural style. Here we see that there's some specific aspects from the assessment that she can learn about her own style in terms of how she relates to others. She, she has some tendencies that she possesses that make her quick to potentially confront others. And again, the dimension from the assessment was low needs to be liked, but again, the tendency that's being put forth is this, this confrontational, potentially argumentative um, tendency. She may be forceful in her dealings with others due to her assertive nature, uh, and this might result in her being more of a talker than a listener, similar to what we saw in the formal performance review. And she may also be more direct in her feedback approach, less beating around the bush, more saying how it is. So for Laura, knowing these aspects of herself can help her in gauging how these things might help her or might hurt her as a leader and as coach, in that leader as coach role. For instance, she's not likely to shy away from difficult conversations and this should likely help her as a coach, um, and particularly in coaching in the moment. Um, however, she might need to think through her words. She might need to think through her approach if she wants to be effective in getting through with her team member. And this might differ depending on her team member as well. So let's go ahead and explore our second key. And the second key is really related to the first one, uh, and this is about knowing your direct report personality style. So just as our tendencies, our preferences, and the culmination of our past experiences shape how we process information, of course that is how um, it, it shapes and how our direct report or team members process information and how they approach new situations. They have unique aspects. They have things that have shaped them differently than how we've been shaped as a, as a manager, potentially. So your words, your actions, and your leader as coach capacity can be interpreted vastly differently um, by you compared to your team member, or that same communication to a group of team members can be interpreted vastly different to each, by each team member, depending on their unique aspects and what they've experienced. So, Knowing your direct report is really part of this, this first step. If we think of the first key as part of this first step to being aware and recognizing diversity between us and others and diversity among people, differences and perspectives, to really unlocking how we interpret the world, how they are likely to interpret the world as well and in our interactions with them. So let's again take a look at our, our role, pay, role play, excuse me, um, participants. And here we have Jessica. Similarly, if we have assessment information 
um, if Laura has assessment information, she can gain insights into Jessica's natural style. And so here we can see there's some specific aspects in Jessica's style that then in turn relate back to how she works and relates with others. And so she has some tendencies. Um, she, has, she possesses this uh, tendency to be action-oriented, um, so wanting to immediately take action, put things into effect. Um, she might be forceful, forceful in her dealings with others as well, and this is similar to Laura's, Laura. So again, more of a talker than a listener. There's some new things we learn about Jessica here that, um, than we had seen with Laura. So Jessica, based on some of her assessment findings, we find can be more skeptical of people. So you have to earn her trust. And she might have more of a, a bent or a slant towards pessimism when perceiving situations, when, when encountering obstacles. So knowing these aspects of her direct report, Jessica, in this instance, our manager, Laura, can gauge how she's similar, how she's different from Jessica, and how Jessica is likely to interpret or react to different, different kind of coaching situations as Laura approaches her. For instance, as we kind of alluded to, Jessica and Laura are both assertive. It's going to be important for both of them that they listen to each other. However, Laura, in that leader as coach role, may have to play that up a little bit more in terms of listening, as she learned in her first key. But in the second key, she can know that they have a similar kind of tendency and be able to guide Jessica accordingly as well. Also, Laura might learn Jessica is less quick to trust and becomes frustrated, as we talked about. And so it will be very important for Laura to consider how she approaches Jessica so as to not burn bridges. From there, let's go ahead and take a look at our third key. And this is really that second step here. Now armed with this awareness and understanding, our third key, adapting your style, is about let's do something with this information. Let's use this to assist us in our leader as coach approach and in our coaching in the moment um, style that we're adopting. So bearing in mind, uh, we would like you to bear in mind one key point, and that is when we're talking about adapting your style, it's not about changing our personality as a manager. Instead, it's about adjusting the approach according to the situation or the individual to increase the likelihood that our feedback is going to hit its mark and, and, our, and, and the results we'd like. So we're going to be more likely to have a positive outcome. It's about tweaking our communication to suit the occasion um, in terms of the person or the situation. So there's also some risks if you don't adjust your style to the person or the situation, now that you have the self-awareness as well as an awareness of your direct report style, you know, not adapting your style can have some risk. So if you know this about your direct report and maybe, you know, they are skeptical um, or they're less likely to look at situations negatively, they could become defensive, you know, or shut down. Um, you know, that was part of what I think was happening in our first role play where Jessica was like, well, I mean, I see what you're saying, but yeah. there was that but in there. She was becoming defensive and she felt like she had to defend herself and she was shutting down. So she may be resistant to actually hearing your message. They may be, you know, pushing back and, and giving um, reasons why they did something. Or they could completely misinterpret your feedback. Maybe you were giving really positive feedback, but the way that you were saying it or the way that you were approaching it that didn't match their style caused them to take it very negatively. Um, so they could completely misinterpret that message. You could not really get the results that you were achieve, wanting to achieve. Um, maybe they weren't really bought into that because of the message that you were giving or the way that you were approaching it. They could also, maybe they heard your message, but they didn't agree with it or they didn't like the way that you approached it, so they really lack that follow through. They're not really putting forth effort to, to actually go out and change and do that, that goal. Um, and the way that you could approach it could also damage that relationship. So as we saw with Jessica, she's pretty skeptical. You have to earn her trust. Um, so if you're not working to build that rapport and, and, and really approach her in that way, that could also damage that relationship especially in the beginning when you're trying to build that relationship with that employee. Those are some great points, Heather. Um, and so 
let's go ahead and continue to explore adapting your style, but let's return to our audio exercise. Um, we're going to explore three examples of what Laura's managers learned about how she could adapt her coaching um, to coach in the moment and be more of that leader's coach. Uh, and doing so in anticipation of how Jessica may react based on what she learned on, on the assessment. And so here again, just to refresh her, Laura's our manager, Jessica's employee. And the traits we learned about Laura, one trait that we'll explore here, she's got that high assertiveness, as I mentioned, and that was she has this tendency to be forceful in her dealings with others, and she might be more of that talker than listener. And what we learned about Jessica, she's very similar. She actually has a similar tendency of being more of that talker than a listener. So if Laura knows that they both have an assertive style, and they're more likely to talk than they are to listen, um, what does we that she can adapt her style to make sure that Jessica is also having time to give her opinion um, and to make sure that she's contributing to the discussion? Because if we, as we saw in our first role play, there was a lot of time that Laura was talking and Jessica was, was kind of jumping in, but Laura wasn't necessarily giving her a lot of time to have that contribution. So Laura could adapt it a little bit more where she's giving Jessica that chance to really assert her opinion. Um, so then, if we think about it, how might the conversation be different if Jessica was actually low in assertiveness? Um, so really, if we think about that, it's, it's, Laura is very highly assertive, but Jessica is now low assertive. Her tendency to speak up is going to be even less. She's going to take a lot more time listening than she is giving her opinion. So Laura would definitely need to make a little bit more of an adjustment, maybe ask some more open-ended questions, pause and give Jessica time to actually contribute to the conversation. So she may have to you know, take that style and adjust it a little bit so she can give some more opportunity for Jessica to contribute to the discussion if her style was very different than Laura's. So taking a coaching in the moment kind of approach, it's it's really interesting with that last question to see how people react differently to different coaching styles based on their natural tendencies, their natural styles. Mm -hmm. So then if we take another look at, um, again, we're kind of expanding more on this adapting your style. So another trait that we see between Laura and Jessica that we were going to discuss today is really Laura has some high criticism tolerance. So this is what we talked about earlier, where she may be very blunt, but very forthcoming with giving other people feedback. And then now with Jessica, what we're looking at here is she's lower on optimism. So we talked about that earlier, where she may have a tendency to approach situations and view them in a more negative, um, kind of like a negative view, or look at them pessimistically. And so this is an interesting one. Um, if we think about what this is likely to look like in terms of behaviors. Since Jessica tends to be a little bit more pessimistic, Laura's tendency to be heavy-handed potentially in her feedback, if not corrected, could cause Jessica to shut down, not listen to Laura's real intent in her feedback. Um, and so what would behoove Laura is really if she adapts her style by taking maybe more of a sensitive style in delivering the feedback, not be so heavy-handed, not use the hammer, in delivering her feedback, but still give the feedback nonetheless. And what's interesting is this conversation might be different if Laura was low criticism tolerance. Um, it would be different. And if we explore that, if Laura was lower on criticism tolerance, that means she doesn't have that direct approach. She would be softer in her approach. Um, that could really be an asset to coaching in the moment and that her approach may be more in alignment with this particular team member of Jessica. However, there's also a liability there as well uh, that Laura would need to be aware of. Being if she, if she were low on criticism tolerance, taking that softer approach, depending on how soft of an approach she takes, she may, she may hide her true feedback in, in very uh, positive wording, for instance. And so it's important to give the feedback and give it in a manner that people can understand and not hide from it. Um, and that's a threat from being lower on criticism tolerance as well. 
So while it might go over nicer with Jessica, it could potentially, though, be detrimental if she doesn't hear the real intent of the feedback. Let's explore one more in terms of adapting your style with this third key. Here, again, with Laura, we know she's got this low aspect on the assessment that emerged that was low need to be liked. And that was triggering this tendency, that was triggered based on her tendency to perhaps be more um, asked to be confrontational or argumentative, that sort of tendency. And we're looking here at Jessica's particular natural style that emerged from the assessment as well, and that's her tendency to be more focused on negative aspects or negative attributes than others and be more skeptical. Well, if we look at that, so Laura's you know, potential or um, tendency to be a little bit more confrontational could be detrimental. So we talked about this earlier where it could possibly damage the relationship depending on how confrontational she is, especially knowing that Jessica is, you know, very cautious and skeptical in trusting others. Um, so Laura could really think about when adapting her style, so maybe toning that down a little bit, maybe being less confrontational and maybe taking a, a little bit more of a softer approach. Um, and be more cooperative when it comes with Jessica. And that could really help to forge a relationship, but also allow Jessica to really take, take in that feedback, how Laura intends that feedback to be taken in. So if we kind of look at both of them and say, well, how might this be different if each of them had a slightly different style? So let's, let's say um, Laura is very high on need to be liked and Jessica is very high on positive about people, that conversation could be very different. Um, where Laura might be more accommodating in her style and may have that more soft approach and may, may be concerned, more concerned with how Jessica takes the feedback. Um, so that could be very helpful in, in that situation, but it also may result in her avoiding having these tough conversations. So if she's too soft, um, or, or, you know, takes it, tones it down too much, then, you know, she may avoid those conversations that you have to have that direct confrontation um, with, a, with a direct report. And then if we look at Jessica, she's really high on positive about people. She's very trusting. Maybe she's very open um, to others and believes that others have the best uh, interest at heart. You know, maybe though at some times she may be too trusting and let people um, take advantage of her and maybe um, you know, really is taking in that information and not really realizing that the the, um, the feedback that she's given um, is more on the negative side. So there could be different ways of, of adapting your style based on what you understand about yourself as well as your direct report. So the, the fourth key to coaching in the moment, as we discussed earlier, we kind of showed earlier, is really about focusing on the goal. So we talked about, you know, first, knowing your style, knowing your direct report style, and then adapting your style. Well, really this fourth key is about really understanding what the goal is for these talent conversations. What is it that you want your employee to get out of this conversation? What is the outcome that you're really hoping for them to achieve? So if you keep this goal in mind, this can really help focus that conversation to be really specific and effective. And there's there's, uh, though there's many different goals that you can have for a conversation, they tend to fall into kind of two different categories. So you either want an employee to continue to do a behavior, they're doing something really well, they're doing a positive behavior, you want them to continue doing that, so you're reinforcing that behavior. Or you want them to stop doing a behavior or to start doing some new behavior instead of um, a behavior that they're doing. So maybe they're doing something a little bit differently than you want them to, to do, so you're trying to redirect them to a behavior that would be more effective. So as we saw in the first role play, Laura at times was trying to redirect Jessica to really empower her team versus doing things by herself. So we're going to kind of talk about and then dive into a technique that's going to give us more information about how to do this reinforcing and redirecting through coaching in the moment. Absolutely. And so, again, we relate this to the fourth key um, in terms of focusing on the goal, um, but it's really with relationship to coaching in the moment as a whole 
and a technique hopefully that would, would assist. Uh, we know the vast majority of those that participated in the poll at the beginning um, did include, I think it was 56 percent uh, that said, how can I be more effective in giving feedback? And so this is one particular technique um, that if mastered could be um, a good rule of thumb to kind of guide these kinds of conversations. And we call this technique action impact. And where action impact is really coming from is that we discussed how conversations can really feel unnatural or uncomfortable at first, and it takes practice to, to hone your skills. So if you're adapting and adopting this mindset of leader as coach, this is a manner in which you can kind of kind of act upon providing feedback. Um, so let's explore this, this particular technique and what we mean by this, if this can prove to be helpful in coaching in the moment. Uh, this simple guide first introduces the behavior, um, this simple guide as we're calling or this technique is really first introduce the behavior that you'd like to discuss. So the action piece here as part of this simple guide is share your observations of the target action of that behavior. Give the person you're coaching an awareness of the situation and the context. So the action you're taking is taking action to give feedback on these observables and the action that the person certainly took as well, if you'd like to think about it in those terms. It's about focusing on specific observable behaviors, um, about coming from a place of trust using open-ended questions to facilitate this dialogue. Um, all of the kinds of things in talent conversations that would make this very useful would be to make sure you're coming from that place of trust and affirming the person. In order for a person to change, they need to feel that they're capable of growth and development. And so it's important as part of this action portion and having these discussions about observable behaviors and this discussion that the employee sees their potential. Okay? It's certainly not about hiding from facts, or, but really confronting, not necessarily in an aggressive way. You know, great coaching can only happen when it's rooted in the realities of the day, no matter how harsh. But what's important here in this action portion is to position this feedback, okay? And making sure you're having this discussion, exploring possibilities as a coach with the individual is really your role to help the employee see things with fresh eyes to see things maybe in a way that perhaps they didn't otherwise. And so this is all captured as part of that action portion. It's about, again, in a nutshell, what are the observable behaviors, really talking about those, um, those facts that you've seen, not um, any kind of subjective information, impressions, and opinions, but what did you see, those facts, and exploring options and possibilities with the individual. These, in turn, as part of the um, action impact is then, of course, the second piece of action impact, which is the impact itself. And really, as part of this discussion and giving effective feedback, this is about discuss the impact of those actions that the individual took, the behavior that they exhibited. If you discuss the impact of them, again, very factually, this helps the person understand the direction um, of the feedback and the importance of the situation. Um, so really, impact is understand the action that they took result, the result of the action they took in terms of what has happened based on that. Again, keeping it very factual. And so as part of impact, as you continue to explore possibilities with the individual, you also explore the impact of those. And really, when you're exploring those possibilities, it's about, as a coach, allowing the person to come up with those um, those options, those alternatives to behaviors, those alternative actions that they can take, and having them arrive at what is the impact of those as well. When the employee certainly comes to those on their own, they're more likely to have buy-in, they're more likely to have ownership, they're more likely to feel positive about it because a directive approach was not taken, and they've come upon that understanding or enlightenment on their own. So action impact is really about facilitating those discussions, focusing on observable behaviors, having those open-ended discussions in this trusting kind of manner, open dialogue with the individual, and then making sure they understand the impact of their current actions that they've taken, as well as the possible actions that they could take in the future. 
So let's go ahead and explore this in terms of some of those variety of situations that Heather had mentioned as well. So if we think about kind of the, when we talk, talked about focusing on the goal, we talked about two different categories of goals. So that first one was reinforcing. So again, this is where you wanted an employee to continue to do a behavior. They were doing something very well and you wanted to reinforce that behavior. So an example of that would be, as you can see here, I noticed your communication was well laid out and your data was compelling. I saw people taking notes and nodding their heads when you described the information. There you're talking, you're giving them the action, an observable behavior that you saw. Then, you know, as a result, the team will be supportive of adopting the program in their areas, which I know is an important goal of yours. Here's where you're, you're pointing out that impact. You're making sure that they understand how this aligns to their goals and to their motivations, and that can really help you to reinforce this behavior that you wanted them to have when you really tie it back to what's important to that employee. And that's really the key here is what's important to them, the more you make it tied back to that, the more likely they're going to buy into that. And with this, you're giving them positive praise. You want them to continue to do something. So you're giving them specific information and facts about what you saw, and then you're tying it back to their goals and what that impact is. And then the other one that we talked about was redirecting. So using the same technique, you can also redirect the behavior. And again, when we're saying redirecting, we're referring to when you want them to stop doing a behavior or you want them to do something differently. You want them to start maybe doing a different behavior. So in this example, you say, you know, I'm concerned that the new customer program did not hit our target sign up. I know you made sure all employees went through the training but I didn't see any follow-up from you to ensure they were following the process or applying what they learned. So again, you're giving them an observable behavior. So you're, you're highlighting that action. You know, as a result, I'm not sure that the program met its potential or reached enough customers, which I know was an important goal of yours. Again, you're really defining what that impact is, tying it back to their goals and what's important to them. You know that they wanted to reach their goal, and you're tying that action of what you saw um, right to their goals to make sure that they're understanding the importance of that. So let's go ahead and take a look at this in terms of our audio exercise, our role play participants, Laura and Jessica. Um, so again, Heather gave some great examples, a couple of illustrations in terms of what action impact looks like for reinforcing and redirecting. Let's see how that might play out with Laura and Jessica. Um, so first, we'll go ahead and listen to reinforcing. Um, so please make sure you can listen um, or hear this first, uh, on the audio portion, however you are, are attending or participating today. Um, please also use the chat feature again. Uh, we will do a debrief after the role play as far as what went well. Uh, do you think this method helped to reinforce behaviors for Jessica? So let's go ahead and get underway. Hi, Jessica. Do you have a second? Sure, Laura. What's up? I was able to observe your interaction with Erica just now. I know your tendency is to jump in and solve problems, but you allowed Erica to solve the problem on her own, which shows that you trust her to make decisions. I know this is something you have been working on, and I can tell it's making a difference with your team. Wow, thanks for noticing. I really appreciate it. Okay. A, a quick exercise here. Um, but go ahead and chat in some of your impressions. This is action impact in action. <laughs> so do you, what went well um, in this role play? What didn't go well? And do you think this method helped to reinforce the behaviors? What did Laura do specifically that was well? What did you hear that was in alignment with action impact? Absolutely. Um, and I do realize some of you are not able to see uh, some of these uh, contributions, so we'll go ahead and read some of these out loud. She gave her specific examples. She commended her on it, so she knows that it's the kind of action she needs to take more of. Absolutely. And I love those specific examples she did give because they're rooted in facts. They weren't generic or subjective types of things. Uh, to your point, Joyce, 
and that Jessica knows exactly what she did that she should replicate in the future. That's great. Excellent. Absolutely. Yeah, she, she didn't just give negative feedback. You're right. Great comment there in terms of this is reinforced me. And I think if I understood that comment correctly that just came through, it, it's about the importance of reinforcing feedback. I think a lot of times when we think of coaching, we do think more of corrective action or more redirecting or what we need to stop. And it really is that action impact can help with any kind of feedback, and that certainly reinforcing feedback is very valuable in terms of engaging our employees. Coaching in the moment is about engaging our employees. Um, so great. Okay, fewer, fewer comments on this one, um, but certainly nonetheless, thank you for contributing there. Hopefully that, that illustration was helpful. So again, kind of talking about you know using the action impact technique in action. Um, so we're going to talk, we're going to listen here to Laura and Jessica, but now in a redirecting example. So where we're Laura's trying to redirect Jessica to focus on it, doing something in a different way. So let's go ahead and listen to this technique um, in redirecting. Hi Jessica, do you have a second? Sure, Laura. What's going on? I noticed that you stepped in and managed the situation when Erica was having some difficulty with the system. I sent some frustration. I know this new system is a big change for your team. Did you get the outcome you wanted? Well, I wanted to ensure the customer left happy, so I went ahead and tried to solve the problem quickly. I'm a little frustrated that Erica could not take care of it herself. I'm surprised that you let that frustration show. What was difficult about this situation? Well, you know how we talked about empowering my team? I feel like I spent a ton of time preparing them for this new system, and they should be able to handle it with our customers. How about you coach Erica so she is able to handle situations like this in the future? Well, I'm not really sure. You know, one idea is to spend some time with her one-on-one -on -one to make sure she feels comfortable with the system. Also, I need to remember that things like this will happen, and I need to maintain a positive attitude with my team. Do you have any other suggestions? These types of situations, like the one you just had with Erica, are great opportunities to coach your team in the moment. Instead of having Erica help another customer, you could use these opportunities to help Erica find the right answer instead of solving the problem for her. Does that make sense? Yeah, yeah, it really does. Instead of looking at these moments as failures, I should see them as learning opportunities. I need to take advantage of these opportunities to develop my team members. And what impact do you think that would have? This will have a huge impact on my team. I want them to know I care about their success and that I'm here to help guide them when they do run into problems. Ultimately, this will lead to stronger performance and happy customers. I really appreciate the advice. Thanks. So thinking again, using the chat feature, you know, kind of chatting your thoughts. How do you think this role play went well? And is there pieces of it that didn't go well? Do you really think that this method helps to redirect behaviors in, um, in Jessica. So yes, definitely we've got some, some comments coming in, you know, asking open-ended questions, letting in Jessica ask, come and ask for input, um, two-way communication, it was followed by quite a few open-ended questions where Laura was asking Jessica, well, what do you think? Um, you know, really have the employee come to their own conclusions, yes open-ended questions that it gives you that learning opportunity for Jessica where she could come up with the, the solution on her own and as Nilo was talking about earlier if they're coming up with that, that solution on their own they're much more likely to be bought in, into that new behavior where they were able to come to the conclusion and come up with that new way of doing things um, on their own so definitely and I think that you know that method could really help with the redirecting so that they understand again what the action was, as well as what the impact was. You know, again, you know, there's some more questions or comments coming in. You know, she asked her questions to really get to her to think about how to handle the situation, and it caused Jessica to be more open to expressing her thoughts and feelings um, and be more receptive to Laura's suggestions. You know, Laura did this, what she was telling Jessica to do, so it had a, um, a domino effect, definitely. You know, and she provided, Laura provided her point of view of the situation to Jessica and then allowed her to see for herself by asking, what do you think? That really helps Jessica feel empowered, definitely. Yeah. Yeah, great comments. Thank you, everyone. What I really am tickled by this one, too, it's sort of 
um, Laura using action impact on Jessica to then in turn use action impact with Erica. <laughs> <laughs> yes, she was saying, well, you could use it as a coaching moment. Exactly. So definitely. And I know we're coming to the close of our time with you today. Again, thank you so much for, for participating as part of this. We have one key left over. And I know this was, um, I believe, 47% had wanted to know if my feedback is working, that that was a, a challenge um, that to know whether my feedback is working. And that is, in fact, our fifth key to coaching in the moment. And in fact, the fifth key is about evaluating your coaching approach and seeking feedback. And, and it's almost um, the nature of coaching of the moment kind of enables you to evaluate whether your, your feedback and your coaching is in fact working. By using coaching the moment, you are opening the door for continuous feedback, not for it to be a formal one time a year or you know, quarterly kinds of discussions. So by its very nature, by using coaching the moment, it gives you the opportunity to get some feedback on whether things are working. Because at the end of the day, to know whether your coaching is working, you have two options. It's watch for change and ask for feedback. And then course correct as needed based on, on what you see in terms of actions or the feedback you receive. And really, this is about follow-up. It's really, uh, the last key is about following up to coaching in the moment. Seek feedback from your team. Seek it from those around you. Each situation is going to require different types of style, different feedback, and so it's just great to make sure you have all those resources available and gain that feedback to know if it's working. If you, if you have great conversations and catch people in the moment, but never follow up on whether they're progressing, then you've lost another moment to coach and mentor that person. You'll lose momentum after that initial conversation. So coaching the moment, again, is about following up in a timely way so that person hasn't had the time to, to implement uh, but not so soon so the person hadn't had time to implement change, but is about implementing um, things quickly, acting in a timely way. Um, and use those follow-up conversations to calibrate and course correct, as we said. So in summary, we have a great comment here for, for key five. Uh, it's important for you to have that feedback loop. Certainly keep that in mind. But in summary, here are our five keys, again, to coaching in the moment. Um, we, of course, have know your personality style, know your direct reports personality style. Assessments can be very invaluable towards that, but really are only the first step. Then it's about doing something with it, adapting your style now that you're armed with that information, implementing some type of, of behavior. Uh, focus on your goal. Allow that outcome to certainly guide you. Um, and definitely ask for continuous feedback. Continue leveraging the coaching the moment um, opportunity that you've created to evaluate your coaching approach and, and seek that feedback. Um, one thing to bear in mind as we're talking about coaching in the moment is all those classic coaching tips still apply. As we talked about earlier, building that relationship, that rapport, certainly is important um, regardless of what technique you're using, action impact, coaching the moment, or anything else. So coaching still needs charm, as we call it here. So showing the individual that you care, coming from an honest place with authentic transparency, being respectful of, of your team member, and certainly trying to encourage and motivate them. So all of those classic types of things still apply here. Certainly, as we talk about coaching in the, in, in the moment, um, being that leader as coach or leveraging the action impact technique that we discussed today uh, to hopefully help you in making those effective uh, sessions, effective feedback in your exchange with your direct report. And so with that, Dan, just if there are any questions that have come through with our final minute that we have here. Well, you know what we'll do is, because we do have less than a minute, I don't want to take anybody else's time. For the questions that we do have, I'll address them with Neela and Heather, and we will send you the answer to your questions, I promise, by the end of the day. Um, so, so let's run it like that so we don't take any more of anybody's time. And then, um, so everybody knows, our next webinar is September 8th. Uh, we do these monthly uh, webinar series about uh, hiring, uh, solving hiring challenges. 
Um, so thank you very much for attending this one. You can email us if you do have questions that you didn't get to put in the queue uh, at info at outmatch.com. Our website is outmatch.com where there is a, a plethora of resources. And uh, you can get us uh, at OutmatchHCM on Twitter with the hashtag OutmatchInsights. I thank everybody for joining us. Neela, Heather, excellent job. Um, and we'll see you next month. Thanks, everyone. Thank you, everyone.